And then, you know, one of the other things I learned really quick too this year was I took a different approach to setting my lineups. Um, you know, normally you always hear the, the, the start your stud. You know, mm -hmm. don't ever sit your stud. Start them. Go. Mm -hmm. And that's it. <laughs> I've learned this year, and this is stuff I've learned from my uh, Detroit Beastie, who I'm going to chat with, and he's just a, he's a phenomenal DFS mm -hmm. player. Uh, you know, uh, Dan and Nate from Sons of Dynasty. These, you know, our group mm -hmm. over there. That's uh, they're fantastic. Um, I started using um, a DFS approach to my dynasty leagues, especially when you're kind of going towards the playoffs and and even later into the league because in the in the year because um, you know there are you're you're really looking at the matchups and you're looking at what's the, the advantages are of these players and you know. I think it was like week 17. There was a week that Kirk Cousins was out for that. He was right in the playoffs too. Justin Jefferson was starting with Sean Mannion. Yeah. You know, and I had to look at that and you're like, God, that feels so scary. Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking and I'm going, okay, my next option is Devin Singletary. <laughs> and I'm like, man. And I looked at it and I said to myself, you know what, dude, what are you doing? I like Singletary's on fire. He's got an opportunity. Let's, let's go. Let's just no, nothing hold back. So I benched Jefferson for Singletary. That resulted in an extra, I think it was 17 points. Right. And, and that's what propelled me into the next game. So I started taking like this DFS approach to my lineup settings each week and looking at the matchups rather than to start your studs and, you know, just continuously pounding that drum. And when you kind of do that, one, it gives you a nice advantage in DFS because now you've kind of already done the research, but it gives you a, a real big advantage during your weekly games because now you kind of get to see those matchups that you want to take advantage of. And, you know, it, it, it makes a difference because sometimes, like I said, starting your studs is always smart, but sometimes there's games where you don't necessarily want to start them. And yeah. you know they're only going to get four points, and, <laughs> but you're going to start them anyways because they're your studs and they could blow up. It's like get creative, you know, go against the grain a little bit. Don't be afraid to do it. It took me a lot to start Devin Singletary yeah. with Justin Jefferson, man. It, it hurt. You I put was, your big boy pants on for that one. I, I, I did. <laughs> and I was biting my nails the whole time. And then all of a sudden I'm like, touchdown one. Yeah, touchdown two. <laughs> yeah. You know, and everyone's like, you know, they're like, you SOB, man. How did you do that? And it's just, you know, but it, it was literally just doing research on the games and matchups. Yeah. Um, so that's something I've really pulled into it this year. Different is just approaching my weeks, approaching dynasty, you know, in the trades and the values, you know, but using more of a, a DFS approach when setting my lineups each week based on opportunities and matchups that I'm seeing. Uh, what other guys, and, you know, Bo too. Bo's a big one. Yeah. Uh, you know, they always do all these articles and stuff like that. And it's like, Read them, see what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Look at the advantage. Look at the matchups and see if it makes sense. And you know what? It it worked. And I made a lot of uh, a lot of playoff runs this year because of that. Yeah, we come across that start your stud thing every year. It always happens, and we always find you know these studs who have these terrible matchups, and it all becomes it starts to become a comfortability level. That's what I always tell people is if you're comfortable with starting your stud and them going for nothing in this bad matchup, then do it. If 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 you'd rather go for the big play and and you're comfortable with that stud possibly going off on your bench because you made the better process decision in your lineup you know go for it like that you have to decide with yourself what can you live with sometimes when setting your lineup you do man and that's a huge one man it's what you can live with and Again, it's like I always say, scared money doesn't make money. So mm -hmm. if you see something, you got to, you get, sometimes you just got to take that risk and just say, okay. And then other times it doesn't work out. I will admit, you know, yeah. I started, uh, who the hell, did, uh, I started Ronald Jones like a dummy. And I, sh I shouldn't have listened to uh, some people. It, <laughs> Tell it, it me pissed about me it. off. <laughs> it pissed me off. Cause you know what I did is, is, is I was sitting there, I'm looking at him going, they're right. Ronald Jones got a phenomenal matchup. This should be a smash game for him. And I went and I sat DK. And that was the week DK went off for 35. Yeah. And I was bullshit. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, DK hadn't done much before. And you were kind of like getting yeah. a little bit like, I had receivers. It was the running back that I wanted to get the opportunity, the, 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 the volume. And I thought he would have it. And it turned out to be a complete bust. And man, did that, it sucked. Rojo burned a lot of us uh, <laughs> when he got, when he got on that field. It's, that was a really unfortunate one, especially because, you know, yeah. he had the Jets game where it was like, okay, he had a bad game against the Panthers when it was a smash matchup, I'm sure, but he's now he's got the Jets. The Jets are the worst, and then he gets hurt, and you're like, you know, you know, you can't control injuries, but still you're just like, man, it just never stops with Rojo. 
No, oh man. And I, I put out right before that Jets game too. I'm like, and this is going to be the game Keyshawn Vaughn goes off. And then what's he go? He goes and runs for a 45 yard touchdown on the first <laughs> yeah. play of the game. And I'm like, son of a man, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's a, it's a finicky game, man. And then it's like, sometimes like players like Rojo and stuff like that, like, uh, I, I do have some shares of them, but it's like, you got to know when to get off of them too. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's not the time to get off of him because he's got really no value. But when yeah. he's if he signs with another team, there's yeah, a shot that something. his there's there's something that's you're always looking to grab players at their lowest because they're always going to somewhat bounce up at some yeah. point. They're going to gain value, and that's when you can kind of make your move. So you're just kind of hoping with him signs with a good team. Game one, he shoots off for a hundred and a tutty, and now you got some value going. People are going to start Trade springing block. the top twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Get them. I'm out. <laughs> so yeah. it's huge, man. But you just got to, it's 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 a fun game. But man, it can just definitely drive you nuts sometimes. But that DFS approach, uh, especially when the games are on the line in the playoffs and stuff, made such a huge difference for me and, and my, the amount of ships I was able to get this year. Um, it, it, it was it was it was a game changer.